video, we're going to look at the method for completing an acid alkali titration. You need to know about this if you're taking GCSE chemistry, triple science, or also if you're doing AS chemistry. So before we start, let's have a look at some of the equipment involved. We're going to need a burette, which is this rather tall piece of equipment here, which we're going to use to measure a volume. A funnel for filling the burette, which I will remove before we start. A conical flask, which we use instead of a beaker, because it allows me to swirl without any chemicals splashing out. A white tile, to allow me to better see a colour change. And an indicator, which is going to change colour. This volumetric pipette, which we're also going to use to measure volume changes. And a wash bottle. Now the purpose of titration is to work out the concentration of a chemical by using a chemical reaction. So today I'm going to be titrating hydrochloric acid with sodium hydroxide. So you'll see I've written the symbol equation here and underneath it there's the ionic equation. So I could pick any acid and any alkali and I would still see hydrogen ions reacting with hydroxide ions in order to make water. Now in any titration, one of your chemicals you're not going to know the concentration of. That's the purpose of the titration, we're trying to figure that out. The other chemical we're not going to know the volume of, so that's the one that's going in the burette. So my burette today I've actually already filled with sodium hydroxide. I know what the concentration of that sodium hydroxide is, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue adding it to the acid until I see a colour change, and then when I do, I'll stop and I will measure how much sodium hydroxide I've added. So you might just about be able to see there's a slight curve at the top of that, um, at the top of the sodium hydroxide, and we call that curve the meniscus, and that's always where we're going to try and measure from when we're measuring here. So as I say, I've already filled my burette with sodium hydroxide and I actually did that by putting it on the floor so that I wasn't pouring above eye level. And I used a funnel which I'm now removing because if I didn't remove it, then potentially more liquid could drip out of the funnel and increase my volume slightly, which I think has already happened, but never mind. Then I'm going to use my volumetric pipette to measure up exactly 25 mil or 25 centimetres cubed of my other chemical, which in this case is my hydrochloric acid. So the thing with a volumetric pipette is that it can only measure one volume. You might not be able to see from here, but there's a calibration line, which is a little white line here, and I'm going to um, suck up my hydrochloric acid until it's exactly on that calibration line there. And you have to be a little bit careful with these pipette fillers because they go very slowly as they um, go through the bulb. And then suddenly, when it gets to the narrower tube, it goes very, very quickly again. And if you're not careful, you end up going way over. So I've measured that so that my meniscus is on the calibration line, and then that is going to go into my conical flask. And as we say, we use a conical flask, not a beaker, because as the titration is progressing, I'm going to want to swirl it, and if I were to use a beaker, then it would be quite easy for it to splash out, whereas this nice cone shape is going to stop it from splashing. You might have met a pipette filler that looks a bit like this instead, um, where you use the A and the S and the E in order to, um, in order to suck up your acid instead or your alkali instead, um, but they just basically do exactly the same thing. So while that is going into my conical flask, I can have a little bit of a think about my indicator. Now there are lots of different indicators you can use. Phenolphthalein is a good one because it has a very, very clear colour change. So it's colourless in acids, but in alkalis it's absolutely bright, vivid pink. And that makes it a very good indicator for a titration because I want to know within a single drop that neutralisation has occurred. I wouldn't ever want to do a titration with something like a universal indicator because it would be very hard for me to see the end point, which is the point where neutralisation occurs. Now I'm only going to add a single drop of phenolphthalein to my conical flask because phenolphthalein has a pH of its own and it is going to affect this. So, one drop in there, give it a little bit of a swirl. Now, as we say, that's going to go on a white tile because the white tile is going to allow me to see very, very clearly where this colour change happens. 
Actually, the benches in my lab here are quite nice pale grey, so I'd probably be able to see it anyway, but particularly if you're titrating on maybe a wooden bench, then the white tile is really going to help you to see where the end point is. Now, my wash bottle here is for gradually rinsing down the sides of the flask at various points. Oops. It would probably help to have a lid. Um, and it's okay for me to do that because I already know what the volume here in the conical flask was to begin with. So I'm not going to be actually affecting the number of um, hydrogen ions that are in this flask. Even though I'm adding more water now, I'm going to use my starting volume when it comes to calculations. So having added my acid and my indicator into the conical flask and my alkali into the burette, and they're that way round because I, um, I know the concentration of my alkali and I don't know the concentration of my acid. They could be the other way around in a different question. I'm going to start titrating. So my first titration is what we call a rough titration, where I'm literally just going to open the tap and I'm going to let it run through. Now you should be able to see it's starting to turn slightly pink at the bottom occasionally. And what I'm actually waiting for is the first permanent colour change. So you can see it goes pink and then after a little while it fades. So what I want to be doing is letting through a little bit and then swirling. Now what I should really do is do one full rough titration where I just let everything go through and then say, oh, it changed colour at about 20 centimetres cubed. So from next time, I'll maybe go as far as 18 and then I'll slow down. But actually, I don't want to have to set this all up again. Um, so let's go relatively slowly for now. So I'm going to let a little bit through and then give it a bit of a swirl. And I should really be washing this down with distilled water each time as well. So you'll see each time the colour is staying for a slightly longer amount of time, but it's still disappearing. And I'm going to carry on doing this until I have a permanent colour change. Now when I get that permanent colour change, I'm going to stop and I'm going to repeat this and I'm going to repeat it until I have concordant data. So concordant data are data that are within 0.1 centimetres cubed of each other. So it doesn't have to be exactly the same. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to titrate until we are certain that we know what volume of each chemical we need to complete the neutralisation. Now, when you get very, very close to the end point, you're going to start um, adding dropwise, which is where you literally just add a drop at a time. I'm not quite there yet. So each time I'm having to swirl it a bit harder in order to get it to, in order to get the colour to um, disappear. So I'm getting pretty close. Now that colour is not really disappearing, so I think we have probably reached our end point. So that is the point where I would stop, um, depending on how much sodium hydroxide I have left in my burette. Um, I'm actually just under 24 there, and the full capacity is 50, so I would be okay to just titrate from there again, or I could refill, and I'm going to repeat the process until I have concordant data. So that's how you do the practical side of titration, and then in the next video we'll look at how you do the calculations.